everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Today we are getting into the question of German versus Baroque fingering. What? <laughs> this of course is to do with music and tuning and instrument design. What could be more interesting than that? So on the recorder there are two general tuning fingering systems, that's where you put your fingers on the instrument, the German style and the Baroque style, also called the English style, the historical style, the modern style, but today we're going with German and Baroque. Which is better and why do they exist? The Baroque fingering is the normal recorder. That's the one that we classical musicians and other styles of music use and it's the one I would recommend. If I'm completely honest, I started researching this video fully prepared to <clears throat> on the German style. Um, along the way I've encountered a few things that have made me think differently so I'm going to try and give the most balanced opinion that I can. The German style recorder is different in a very simple way. In the German style, the fourth hole is bigger and the fifth hole is smaller. That's it. It's your fifth hole right here that's smaller and that has one purpose and one purpose only. The note F. Context. On a normal Baroque style recorder, the note F is achieved with a forked fingering. So you have all the holes down apart from your middle finger up. On a German style recorder, because of the different sizes of those two holes, you can just lift your fingers. Great, the F is easier. What's not to love? Turns out a lot. I'll get to that. So how did this come into being? Well, if we go back to the 1920s, this was in the midst of the recorder revival. The recorder had lost a lot of popularity, but it was coming back in England and in Germany. In Germany, there was a musician called Peter Harlan, that I'm sure not pronounced with that English accent, and he redesigned the recorder so that you could play the note F like this. Now he was actually a guitarist and his goal was to make the recorder into an uncomplicated folk instrument. Now, anybody who's listened to a, to a Vivaldi concerto or a piece of contemporary music or anything with more than one sharp or flat in the key signature knows that the recorder is an incredibly versatile, flexible, professional, virtuosic instrument. There's nothing wrong with playing uncomplicated folk music on it, but that's not all it can do. And the idea was that by lifting your fingers one by one, you could later more easily transfer to a real instrument like the flute or the saxophone. Yeah. If that is what you want to use a recorder for, playing very simple tunes in one specific key and later transferring to another wind instrument, sure, okay, I can see your point. Allow me to look at the cons. Okay, con number one. Yes, the F is easier, but a lot of the other notes are then out of tune. Your F sharp, which is normally played by like this, is now way too high. You have to adjust this by adding an extra finger. You've made the F easier by taking away fingers, but the F sharp, which I think you use just as much, you have to add fingers to. In the second octave, the F is still like this, but the F sharp, you actually, you have to add your little finger to make it in tune. This, it, this does not feel comfortable. High G sharp is also really out of tune. And in order to achieve that, you've got to do a very tricky half holing or like this 
again, a lot of extra fingers. You've taken one problem and just shifted it somewhere else. And the argument that you're making the recorder easier by having this uncomplicated F fingering, a lot of the normal forked fingerings still exist and they're still the same, the B flat, the A flat, the E flat, it's not like with this one tweak, the whole recorder is suddenly very simple. To do that, we would need keys, like an oboe, and we don't want that. The combination of these open and forked fingerings is something that gives the recorder its color and its variety and its character, and I don't wanna lose that. Another con is that if you're playing on the German system in an ensemble with other people using the Baroque system, you're also gonna have little tuning discrepancies even if you're using extra fingerings to adjust. Urgh, tuning is hard. And if you only play the German system, you are much more limited in terms of the instruments you can buy. Now I've done some research and I have to say there are more German models available than I expected. You can get German system sopranos, altos, tenors, and even sopraninos. The tenors I've seen are even made by good brands such as Mollenhauer and Merck, but this is where you are limited to. I have not seen any German system bass recorders or larger um, Gartline recorders, Renaissance recorders, Baroque pitch recorders, any kind of speciality ones. I have not seen any good quality handmade recorders. If you want to progress beyond that, then you have to step over onto the Baroque system, which is fine, you can do that, but then I would say do that from the start. How easy is it to transfer from the German system recorder to the Baroque system? Very easy, all it is is adding two little fingers. <laughs> In the beginning, this might feel a little bit strange, but because you've used these fingers a lot anyway to play that strange F sharp, I think you'll get used to it really quickly. Oh yeah, another weird thing. So the idea that this German system makes it more like a folk instrument in that you lift your fingers one by one, it has a catch. Listen to this. That's a minor third, D, E, F. But on the whistle, the same fingerings give you a major third, D, E, F sharp. That's gonna be really, really confusing if you want to play tunes you've learned on your German system recorder on a whistle. Honest opinion, I think the German system is pointless and I do not recommend it. But here's the thing, team recorder, I want it to be inclusive, for everybody, I don't wanna shut anyone out. I know a lot of you uh, play on the German system and I've also heard from some of you that the German system is the only thing available where you live. So I think it would be pretty mean of me to say, no, German system. So let's see how we can work with it. My first recommendation would be, if you're thinking of getting a new recorder, maybe taking a step up, um, is to swap over onto the Baroque system. It'll take a little bit of adjusting in the beginning, but you will not regret it. If for some reason you think, no, I must play German system, please get yourself a good instrument. There are a lot of supermarket toys out there. Um, you can get decent instruments from Aulos, Yamaha, Mollenhauer, Merck, all in the German system. And at the end of the day, you make music how you want to make music. You don't have to listen to me talking into my camera. If you've got a German system recorder and you're like, Sarah, this is fine, leave me alone. That's fine, I respect that. I just want you to be able to go as far as you possibly can. So that was my little opinion on German versus Baroque systems. What do you think? Does it even matter in the grand scheme of issues in the world today? I would love to hear from you. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here. You can choose to support the channel by going to the Team Recorder Patreon. Please follow me on Instagram and Spotify. I've got all my stuff on there. And up here's last week's video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.